Hello gentlemen, welcome to our video on empirical formulas from combustion analysis. Now, there are times when a scientist, forensic scientist or analytical scientist will come across a substance that they don't quite know the identity of. And in order to test and figure out what the identity is, they can do something called a combustion analysis. They can take that substance and they can add heat energy to it uh, in an in oxygen-rich environment, hopefully having it combust. And if it does combust, then we can think that the products would be carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So in this case, let's say we have isopropyl alcohol, but we didn't really know exactly what it was. Uh, we know that it is rubbing alcohol, and it's composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, the combustion of 0.255 grams of it produces 0.561 grams of carbon dioxide in your products and 0.306 grams of H2O in your products. And from this, you can determine the empirical formula. So again, my chemical reaction, or chemical equation rather, we have some carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen substance. We don't know the ratio of atoms here because that's what we're trying to find, the empirical formula. So we'll just call that CX, HY, and OZ for now. This is going to have to react in an oxygen-rich environment. And every combustion reaction has, we have carbon dioxide and water as our products. Now, it says that we originally started with 0 0.255 grams of our isopropyl alcohol, which is this first substance here. And that's easy to get. Let's say you're at a crime scene. Then, you know, you scooped up that amount of your substance and you, went, you took it back to the lab and you're now going to test it. So, carbon dioxide, once you did combust it, you ended up with 0.561 grams of CO2 and 0 0.306 grams of H2O. Now, the objective is to figure out what these, um, basically, mole ratios are here, these atomic atom ratios. We have to remember the law of the conservation of matter or mass, which says that matter can't be created or destroyed. So the amount of carbon that I have over here in my products should be the same amount that I have here in my reactants, and the same with my hydrogens and my oxygens. So I'm going to find the mass of carbon here in my reactants, this is X here, using the mass of CO2 because the amount of carbon in both should be the same because matter can't be created or destroyed. So the first thing I do is I state what's given, 0 0.561 grams of CO2. I want to find the mass of carbon, not CO2, but of carbon. So in order to do that, when I'm comparing two things that are different, CO2 versus C, I have to put them in units of moles. So I use the molar mass to do that. So for carbon's molar mass is for every 12.01 grams, there's one mole. So I'm going to get that into moles. However, I'm not going to stop there, so I'm going to keep on going. I'm sorry, this is incorrect. I'm not using carbon here. This is CO2. So it's 44.01 grams. That's a 1 of CO2. Grams of CO2 cancel. But I'm not going to stop there. I want to get to grams of carbon. I know that when I look at this compound, CO2, for every one mole of CO2, I will have one mole of carbon. So my moles of carbon dioxide cancel, meaning in the compound CO2, I have one carbon. So you put one mole of carbon up there. And lastly, the molar mass of carbon. For every one mole of carbon, I have 12.01 grams of carbon. Moles of carbon cancel. And now I simplify because I now have the unit that I want, grams of carbon. I'm sorry, that is a gram, a G there. It's hard to write on this tablet. So I have 0 0.153 grams of carbon once I have simplified that. I'm going to do the same thing for hydrogen here to find the mass of hydrogen using H2O because the mass that I started with should be the same mass that I finished with 
in regards to hydrogen. So I have 0 0.306 grams of H2O, which is what in the original problem. I want to get two moles of H2O. So for every one mole of H2O, I have 18.016 grams of H2O. That's the molar mass from the periodic table. Grams cancel. Now I want to get to um, moles of hydrogen only. So pay attention here. For every one mole of H2O I have, in H2O I have two moles of hydrogen because of that subscript 2 down there. So moles of H2O would cancel in that case. I'm going to bring the next one down here. Obviously you know you would uh, put it right here in this spot. But since I'm running out of room, I know that for every one mole of hydrogen, just H, I have 1.008 grams of H. That's just the molar mass of hydrogen. Moles of hydrogen cancel. Now I simplify. When I do, I get 0 0.0342 grams of hydrogen. And now, for the last one, or for oxygen, it says we find the mass of oxygen by subtracting the mass of carbon and hydrogen from the original isopropyl alcohol sample. So, it says oxygen is present in CO2 and in H2O and in the O2 and in isopropyl alcohol. It's easily found through subtraction here. So we take our original sample, if we look on the problem, it was 0.255 grams, and this is your isopropyl alcohol. I made that abbreviation up, that is not legit. Minus 0 0.153 grams of carbon, which is what we calculated earlier. Minus what we just calculated, 0 0.0342 grams of hydrogen. So in that original sample, CX, HY, and OZ, that's our carbon, that's our hydrogen. Now our remaining oxygen is what results from the total mass here, which is this thing. That's the total mass, carbon, hydrogen, and now oxygen. So oxygen is going to be 0 0.068 grams with sig figs included. And now, we're pretty much home free at this point. We take our masses for the carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen, and we can use them to calculate the empirical formula. Um, now, we've done this before. So, for carbon, it would be taking that 0.153 grams and using it to figure out the whole number coefficients, a whole number um, multiples. So let's do that. I'm going to move pretty quickly for one mole of carbon. Oops. For one mole of carbon, we have 12.01 grams of carbon. It's our molar mass. Grams of carbon here. We get 0 0.0127 moles of carbon. Now for hydrogen, do the same thing. This is the same thing that we've done, you know, with uh, just finding the regular empirical formulas of a substance. Except now we don't have to assume a 100 gram sample because we have the exact grams here, the exact masses of these substances. So now I divide by the molar mass of hydrogen, and I get 0 0.0339 moles of hydrogen. And lastly, do the same with oxygen here, and I get 0 0.0043 oops, grams. Sorry, that's incorrect. I skipped a step. I started with 0. 0 0.068 grams of oxygen multiplied times the molar mass 
in this case divide grams of oxygen cancel and I get 0 0.0043 moles of oxygen and now nothing's changed I divide by the smallest amount of moles which is going to be this one 0 0.0043 moles 0 0.0043 moles and 0 0.0043 moles when I do that for my carbon I get approximately three hydrogens approximately eight and my oxygens I get one now this one here with the hydrogens it comes out to about 7.88 that's like around 7.9 so you can round up if it gets you know a little lower than that 7.6 7.7 you can't quite round up to eight and we'll talk about what you can do with that a little later on so my empirical formula is C3H8O so please take notes